We've had the new HP Chromebook X211 in the office for a few days at this point, and one of the highlights of the release of this particular detachable Chromebook was the inclusion of a new app by Google for handwritten notes called Cursive. And I've spent a few days with it as well, and while I think there's a huge potential here for this particular app, there are some downsides right now as well, and so we wanna talk about all of them. All right, so let's just hop in and take a look at this app. Now, one of the cool parts is it's a PWA, which means it is on the web. It is just a URL, and so you can actually navigate directly to it. Uh, it lives at cursive.apps.chrome, I think is what the URL is. We'll have it linked in the description. It'll be on the website as well. But any Chromebook, so we've got a handful of them we've tried it on, any Chromebook can navigate here and attempt to start using Cursive right now if you choose to. But right here at the home screen, you have all your notes. You can create multiple different notebooks that you can contain these notes in. And then once you're in a notebook, you can create a new note. And the UI here is pretty straightforward. You get most of the things you would need from a note-taking app, but there's not a hundred different pencils to sort through and a hundred different uh, brush lengths and all that kind of stuff. This isn't a painting app. This is meant for handwritten notes. So when it comes down to it, you've got a pen tool basically You've got a, a highlighter tool here, and, and then you've got your eraser tool, and you've got some other spacing tools and selection and delete tools and the ability to bring in an image and write over it. And over here on the right, you pick your color, and then you've got three stroke widths. That's it. And honestly, I kind of like this approach to a handwriting app because it's just simple. It gets kind of out of your way. Uh, it doesn't cause a whole lot of fuss and doesn't do a bunch of stuff that it doesn't really need to do. Again, if you want to make a photo or a picture or something like that, you want to go to something like Canvas or go to a different app that is made for drawing. This is not what this is. This is meant for taking notes, handwritten notes and meetings and that sort of thing. One additional option I forgot to mention is you can actually change the backgrounds here. So you've got a few different options, blank, wide and narrow lines, two different grids, small and large, and then dots. So regardless of what you want, basically as your background for this particular note, you can have it. You can keep scrolling and making more notes, but kind of once you're done with this one, you go back and create a new note in the same uh, basic folder. That way you can kind of sort through different days or different meetings or whatever that case may be. And so again, um, it, it's got enough options here, I think, that uh, can give you what you need from a note-taking app. And so some of the cool things it does that are just kind of beneath the surface, it actually walks you through these when you first open the app up. I'm gonna just draw a couple things here. I'm just gonna write test a few times and you're likely picking up on the stylus lag here. We're gonna talk about that in just a second. But I wanna show you some of the cool tricks that are, that are built in here. So if I need to space those things out, there's a space tool up here. I just mentioned it. But you can also just draw a line. You'll see it highlight blue, touch it, and that space tool kind of comes into play. You can create more space, write more notes if you need. Same way, you can just circle stuff. It'll, have, it'll highlight blue, touch it, and it highlights that piece, and you can just move it around. Kind of handy. You can actually resize this as well uh, if you want to make something a little bit bigger. So it actually really helps. Really quickly, you can rearrange your notes after you've kind of taken notes. I know I'm really messy with taking notes, so stuff giving me the ability to move my stuff around after the fact uh, will be a huge help. And then this has been a little bit difficult to use, but if you scribble, yep, that one turned blue, and then touch it after it hovers uh, uh, with that blue color, uh, it'll actually delete the text underneath there, just like that. So pretty cool, quick ways that you can change and manipulate all the stuff that you write in a particular note. So that's all the good stuff. I think Google's laid a great foundation here for a good app, something that's gonna be very useful. And again, remember this is using web technologies here. This isn't an installed Android app. This is using stuff that is able to be leveraged on the web. So even if you just go to the URL and don't install the PWA, you could have your navigation bar up there at the top with your bookmarks and everything and start writing notes. And, and it's all synced up with your Google account. Every device I've tried this on, it just opens up my notes and I don't have to think about it. So it's kind of like Google Keep in that way. And so there's a lot of good stuff going on here. And I think Google's on the way to making a really good handwriting app. But there are some issues too. When it comes to a great handwriting app, really there's two things you have to nail. All the options are great, but if input lag is bad and palm rejection is bad, 
It's unusable as a note-taking app, and as it sits, Cursive kind of toes the line of both of those things not really working the way that they should. So let me show you what I'm talking about here. I'm going to just put my hand on here and start taking a note. I'm going to write kind of stream of consciousness what I'm thinking. So I'm saying, you saw right there, boom, it popped up and it did it again. Meeting notes. And you can probably pick up on some of the lag right there. And it really isn't like, eh, stop moving. Um, it really isn't all about, um, you know, oh, it's not picking up when I put the pen to paper. It's not so much that. It's the, the hesitation there is. Hopefully that's picking up on camera of how long the line kind of trails behind the cursor. And sometimes you notice I go to write and it takes a second for the line to appear. There's kind of a, a, a second that happens there. That doesn't seem like a big deal when I'm just drawing squigglies like this. But when I'm going to take fine notes, especially somebody who writes like I do, which is kind of quick movements, it just misses a bunch of movements or it just connects certain things. And it makes my handwriting, which is not great to begin with, look absolutely atrocious. And it's almost unreadable and unrecognizable by me. And that's not very helpful when I'm trying to take notes to remember something later about something I just consumed. And when I said earlier where the bottom of the screen was moving, you may not have been able to see that. But again, if I go to place my hand down, as soon as I place it down, look, you see stuff popping in, popping out, and it's not... It's not sitting still, which is almost m making it impossible to start taking notes. Now, if I get the pen down and then lay my hand down, it does a better job, but I don't really know anybody that writes that way. Nobody puts the pen down and then lays their arm on the paper. You just approach the paper. And when it comes down to it for me, that's what I need a note-taking app to do. I need to walk up and approach it just like paper and start writing and for it not to move. So right there, it's doing a good job. And for whatever reason, the X2 seems to be doing a better job than some of the other uh, Chromebooks that we've tried, but they are going to have to figure that part out. I think a simple option would just be down in the corner, there's just a lock. You just click the button and it locks everything in place until you unlock that and then you can use your gestures to move things around. I don't know. That feels like a pretty simple fix. Uh, it'd be nice to see Google implement something like that or some much more aggressive palm uh, palm reaction reduction here. Now, I said we tried this on multiple Chromebooks, and we absolutely did. The X2 has its built-in stylus, its USI, so it's gonna be the same kind of stylus experience you get on other devices. Well, the problem with that is, I think part of the issue with Chromebooks is performance, because we tried this app and a USI pen on even lower performance Chromebooks and had a lot of the same issues. But then we tried it on higher end devices like Tiger Lake Chromebooks with USI pens, and it was pretty darn good. There was still a little bit of lag and the, the palm rejection stuff is still an issue. But then we decided to try it on something that kind of changes everything up, and that's this. The good old Pixel Slate. And the reason this one was interesting was it's a device that has its own pin. So this isn't USI, but it's a good pin. Like Google did a good job with their pen technology, even if they didn't sell a whole lot of them. And this isn't a slow device by any means, but it's an 8th gen Core i5, so it's not like blisteringly fast. And yet, you'll notice probably as soon as I start to write, oh, you saw the, the screen just go crazy there. Let me try to hide this down here. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. But as I start to write here, much better. You can tell, again, I know my handwriting's not good, but you can tell it's picking up on all the small nuances and little flicks here. And as I, as my hand learns to trust this, I can get even better. So what am I gonna write? Uh, I've got this color checker over here, so I'm gonna write that. Color checker. And I can read that. I could go back to this note and know what I've read. Again, you probably saw it kind of jiggling around all over the place. That's bad palm rejection. That's not fixed on any device. That's an app issue because there are other apps that do better job at palm rejection. But ultimately, with a faster processor and a good pen, we're still getting a little bit of lag. And you can see, hopefully, I mean, gosh, that's that's pretty darn good. That tells me that if, if things are optimized around USI pens, and this is the experience we got on higher end uh, uh, Tiger Lake Chromebooks as well, it's not necessarily the hardware. I think it has to do with the software being optimized for the hardware specifically. And it could be if the processor inside isn't fast enough, this just can't render quick enough. Like on all the low-end Chromebooks we tried, we had a lot of lag 
all the time. And so I think it's a combination of hardware working together with the software in the right way. And Google's got to figure that out if they're going to sell this cursive app as an actual replacement for what people expect with a note taking app. So as a final kind of test bed, we wanted to, I don't know, go with the cream of the crop when it comes to stylus input and note taking. And honestly, when it comes to a tablet and a stylus, the iPad and Apple Pencil honestly is really good. And so um, I want to show this to you and I'm, I really hope this picks up on camera. Um, I've honestly, until we started this testing, I had not used an Apple Pencil before. Um, and it's a nice stylus, don't get me wrong. It feels really good in the hand and Apple tends to do this stuff really well. It's a closed down ecosystem. They're working on one pen with one type of screen that they have control over but that means they're gonna be able to pull it off probably better than most. And what we found, this is Nebo, the, the handwriting app. Uh, what I found is this is the best uh, pen to screen handwriting experience I've ever had. And I'm not gonna to try to eke my way into this and be careful with it. I'm just gonna slap my hand down here and write notes. So I'm gonna write, again, I'm trying to write random stuff so you don't think I've practiced any of this kind of stuff. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna write, the light is shining in the corner. And I can tell you already, like the nuance of my, that looks like my handwriting. Again, it's not great, but I can read it. Like I know what my handwriting looks like. And so you can see probably, hopefully, like how accurate and how well that pen stroke follows the tip of this pen. And again, I get that this is ideal situations. This is a pen made by the same company that makes the tablet, that manufactures the whole thing, and that makes the software, for the most part. This Nebo app obviously is not made by Apple. But that's what Google needs to be aiming for with Cursive. They need to be trying to figure out what's the best way we can make Cursive work with USI, because that's the prevailing pen tech that's in Chromebooks. How can we make it work best with USI uh, from a hardware perspective to run best on Chrome OS from a software perspective and give people an app that is actually going to be useful to them? Because right now with the, the lack of palm rejection and some of the input lag, it's just an issue. And it's not something I know that I'm going to be using on a regular basis until they fix those things. But once they do, if they can manage a fix and manage to smooth it out, because things like Chrome Canvas have gotten really good and it's pretty darn similar to that app. I think Google has something here that's going to be worth it, that's going to be really useful and beneficial for users. They've just got to iron out these kinks, especially in lower end hardware and Chromebooks like the, the X211 that have like ARM chips and MediaTek chips in them and stuff like that. But guys, that's it for this one. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up, head down there and hit that subscribe button and be sure to ring the notification bell as well if you'd like to be alerted when we make future videos just like this one. Until next time, we'll see you.